Hello everyone. In this demo, we are going to see what is your global .asx file. So I'll just right click on my application and I'll add global file. So global file is nothing but our global application class. Global .asx file. Now, if I add this, I'll get five events by default. One is application start event, application end event, application error event. And I have session start event and session end event. Normally, our practice is we create all our session variables in session start event so that we can have a track that how many session variables we are creating. And those variables will be ready for any user who is accessing for the first time. As soon as a session gets established, session start event triggers. So you'll have all the session variables available for that user. Now, application start event gets triggered for the first time your application gets started. And for the rest of the times, you'll have session start event for each and every user, including the first user. So I have kept breakpoints for both application start and session start event. Now I'll execute this. Now, if we observe for the first user application start event triggers, it is coming to your application start event and I'll say F11. Now, as this is the user one application start event triggers and as usual user will have a session start event. Then it goes for page load event and all those things takes place. Now I'll copy this. and I'll go for another user, user2, paste the URL and press enter. Now this time only session start event should take place. Application start event should not take place. Now see that we are on session start event. So for very first user you have both application start event and session start event and from then onwards we'll have session start event for all the users. So I say that I have five sessions alive as of now if five users are accessing it. If four users are accessing it I say there are four sessions established. So currently there are two sessions which got established. Now whenever I close this it should trigger session end event. So let us see whether it is going to trigger session end event or not. So I'm going to close this. So it has not triggered session end event. I'll close this. It has not triggered session end event. Means what session end event will not trigger simply if we close the browser. If, if you read out here the session end event is raised only when the session state mode is set to in proc in web.config file. If session mode is set to state server or SQL server the event is not raised. So to raise session end event we need to perform some task like setting something in web.config file we need to perform some web configuration settings. But here I'll show you how to end the session explicitly. Like whenever we log in and if I click log out this that session should end. So that thing I can do with the help of a method that I'll be calling on this button click session dot abandoned. This is going to end the session explicitly. So I'll execute, I'll say F5. Now we got application start event, then I'll say F11, then session start event. Copy this. I 
I'll go for another Internet Explorer. I'll paste it. Now I should have only session start event. So I have got only session start event. So I have two sessions available. Now how do I end the session? I'll be going for that button click on default two page. I'll just go default two page and I'll click this button it is going to end the session it has come to your session and event now this is no more alive if I refresh it will say that because this session end has already triggered it is restarting a new session now in the same way I'll go for default two page here I'll click this session got ended so we are at session end event so these are the events that your global dot ASX file contains by default and hope you might have understood what is the event which occurs when and we have application error event even this event get triggers whenever we have some runtime exception or runtime errors so I'm going to make one runtime error. So I'll try to store some string instead of integer. It has thrown an exception. So it is that application error event. So your application error event gets triggered whenever there is an exception. So I can use application error event to send some notifications to me whenever there is an error. So these are the events which gets triggered whenever we run our application. So we have session start event, session end event, application error event, sorry application start event, application end event, application error event, session start and session end event. So in our next video we will see how to use these events to perform some task. Now say I want to calculate or I want to display the number of users who are currently online. I want to say how many users are accessing my application currently. I want to calculate the number of users who are currently online so I can use these events to implement that task. So we will see that in our next video. So that's it. This is all about your global.asax file. Thank you very much.